Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and I have some cold steel axe gang axes and trainers that I want to talk to you about in this video. Now, these were sent to me by the man himself, Lynn C. Thompson, of, uh, the founder of Cold Steel and the Axe Gang. And I can't wait to tell you about how these axes handle and uh, how they work and all the specs and everything. But first, I want to dive into a little bit of history and talk to you about the real Axe Gang led by a man who was known as the King of Assassins. Let's get to it. When most of us hear Axe Gang, we immediately think about black suit and Thai gangsters running around in Shanghai with hatchets and top hats. And uh, it's really a picture that we've seen in tons of media. We've seen it on TV shows like Warrior or in the movies like Kung Fu Hustle, Drunken Master 2, Once Upon a Time in Shanghai, and an endless list of where we see the Axe Gang. But in all honesty, the truth is more gruesome than legend. The Axe Gang really existed, and it was led by a man who was known to the Chinese as the King of Assassins and the Devil on Earth to the Japanese. His real name was Wang Yachao, and he was born in Hefei, which is in Anhui, about 300 miles west of Shanghai. Now, as a boy, he was very bright and active. He was keen on martial arts, and he was very serious in his scholarly studies. In fact, he even passed the imperial exam and attained official scholar status. He was also very politically active and a very outspoken socialist, which eventually led to him fleeing persecution and heading out to Shanghai in 1911. For about a decade, not too much happened, but in 1921, he ended up taking over the Anhui Association and organized a trade union of over 100,000 people. In that very same year, there was a conflict between capitalists and local dock workers. And since most of the dock workers were from Anhui, Wang got involved with his very direct approach. You see, during that time, weapons weren't readily available. But Wang took a different approach and got with some local blacksmiths and was able to churn out over a hundred axes overnight and arm a small army of coolies and dock workers and then go storm the capitalist's compound. Needless to say, the labor dispute was resolved. The incident became highly publicized and the name the Axe Gang was established. Wang ended up taking his headquarters up at the Anhui Labor Guild Hall. Now, it's a little unclear as to what exactly the Axe Gang did. Some sources say that they were involved in drug trafficking while others say kidnapping. But the one thing that all sources can agree upon is that the Axe Gang was known for assassination. Although the name implies the use of the axe, that was not always the case as they employed guns and explosives to accomplish their hits as well. Wang gained his name, the King of Assassins, after he organized the killing of a high-ranking police chief in broad daylight on Shanghai's busiest street. His fairly long career took the lives of many high-ranking officials, and even his failed attempts struck the fear into the hearts of many. Now, interestingly enough, Wang was seen as somewhat of a hero and a patriot as he despised and targeted many puppet officials that were put into place during the Japanese occupation. And it didn't stop there. He targeted many high-ranking Japanese military officials, which ultimately led to him gaining the other nickname, the Devil on Earth. Wang ended up living till 49 years old. He met his demise while on the run as one of China's most wanted criminals, and somewhat ironically, in the very same manner that he had organized for many of his hits during his long reign as the King of Assassins. Now that we know the true history of the Axe Gang, it changes our perspective. We're not just looking at these mobs of nameless, well-dressed goons in the movies, but we're actually seeing what made them such a feared gang. And it was not the suits, but the Axe and truly an iconic image that shaped how gangsters in Shanghai were perceived for generations to come. So now let's talk about this axe. This is the Axe Gang Axe from Cold Steel, and it is a wonderful axe. The axe head itself is made of a 1055 carbon steel, and it's differentially hardened, so you have a hard edge and a flexible axe head. 
The handle itself is a 20 inch American hickory handle with an ovular cross section, which makes for good grip retention and edge indexing. The Axe Gang logo is etched into the head and the Chinese characters full tol bang, meaning Axe Gang, are painted onto the side of the handle. The overall look of it is simple, yet refined, but more like optimized. The blade edge is flat, which means complete direct contact, but there is still a bit of beard to it, which makes it really good for martial arts techniques and training. As a side note, in Choi Li Fat Kung Fu, we have a technique called Tong, which utilizes this top corner to uh, pierce and puncture a target with a direct thrusting motion. That's something that works really well with this particular axe design. Speaking of Choi Li Fat, when it comes to traditional martial arts, I find these to be an excellent length and weight for traditional Kung Fu practice. A lot of modern weapons are based on Chinese opera designs, which were purposely exaggerated to be seen from a distance and also show the strength of the heroes while wielding them. Kind of like what we see now with like um, in Marvel with Thor's hammer, you know, just huge and exaggerated and something very special to him while everybody else has some kind of a uh, regular sized weapon. But personally, I've used these ones to practice the twin hurricane axe form, and I think it's a perfect fit. Now these axes arrived with somewhat of an edge and really it didn't take me too long on the stone to put a good decent edge on them. When it comes to axes, you don't have to have them razor sharp for every application for what needs to be done uh, for practical usage and to have something that's reliable and efficient, you will want to put a little bit more of an edge on this than what they show up with. However, once they're sharpened and to do the job that axes do to chop wood, they work like a dream. I mean, you can really feel the bite that this axe has and the weight behind it just absolutely drives it in. I recently tested these axes on a sheet of cardboard, like what I do with swords to check edge alignment retention and just my cutting lines all together. And because these are axes and a big heavy wedge, I wasn't expecting much. Axes use weight and the wedge to split things apart. So I was so surprised when it cut right through that cardboard with ease. In my book, that gives these axes bonus points. Now, I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to hatchet throwing or axe throwing. I know how to do it, I like it, and I can hit my mark pretty consistently, but I'm by no means an expert. So take it for what it's worth when I say that these are excellent throwers. The weight of the head and the length of the handle was very easy for me to put the ax exactly where I wanted. My throws were predictable and consistent. And for me, that's exactly what I want in a thrower. Now, I'm not the only one who has high praise for this. There's a lot of actual expert throwers and professional throwers that have high praise for this. So I feel I'm not off the mark when I say that this is a great throwing ax. Now, if you're a little hesitant about having a sharp edge and you don't want to chop your partner up while you're practicing or drilling, you're in luck. Cold Steel also makes this polypropylene training axe. So they're very durable. They're great for partner work or so that you can keep yourself safe because there's no really sharp edges. Now they're almost identical to the size of the actual axe. And I mean, the head is a little bit bulkier, but really the main difference is in the weight. And that comes down to two factors. First is these are about just over a pound and a half. So it's a little bit lighter than the overall weight of the regular ax, but it's also in the weight distribution. So these axes are more evenly distributed because it's all the same material. Whereas an ax that has a wooden handle and a solid metal head is going to have the weight concentrated at the head. So it's really a small difference, but if you really want to go into detail, there's that. These axes also have Fo Tol Bang painted on the handle and they have an inscription of the Axe Gang logo as well on the axe head itself. So these are really nice. Even if you want to use these for demonstration, they're great for that as well. It's much safer. And like I said, these are great for partner drills and techniques. So now that I have these, I may be able to make some tutorials as well 
for single axe techniques and hatchet techniques. We'll see those down the line, but I do have a video coming out of me per, um, performing the twin hurricane axe form with these axes and I added a little bit of throwing in the middle so you can see that as well. I'll leave a link to that one at the end of this video and I'll leave a link for all the important information about these axes down below as well as where you can get them. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, again, I want to thank Lynn and the rest of the team over at Axe Gang for sending these axes out for me to check out. This has been an awesome experience and I hope you guys get a chance to check these axes out and use them in your own training. Drop a comment down below if you have anything else to add about the King of Assassins, the Axe Gang, or these axes in particular, if there's anything I uh, missed or that needs to be corrected. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bam.